Radha, Radha, everyone, and thank you for coming for this sharing. So, as every Wednesday, we are reading from the book, The Saints of Raja. For those that don't know about this book, this book is a collection of stories about different holy people who lived in Vrindavan and in wider Vrindavan meaning Raja. So this book is, when I first time started to read this book, it was like a jewel that was found because it shows the living bhakti, I would say, that where you could see the lives of other Vaishnavas and uh, things and situations that they went through. And this gave us, can give us uh, encouragement and confirmations of our own spiritual lives. So, last time, we were reading about Sri Gulab Das Baba. It was a very nice story where Krishna was uh, uh, coming to him disguised. First time as a person who brought him money. Second time as a thief, wood thief. Yeah, so it was really funny and interesting story. But today, we are going, uh, we are going to read next chapter about Gwaria Baba. Those who have a book, they can follow, 411 page. During the days of the British rule in India, there were a number of independent states in the country ruled by Rajas. Dalia was one of them. The Raja of Dalia was fond of crocodiles. He had kept a number of crocodiles in a large pond in the state. A watchman kept a watch on the pond and prevented people from getting, getting into it. One day, he was surprised to see a young Babaji standing inside the pond. He shouted, Oh Baba, get out of the pond! Don't you see the crocodiles there? They will devour you. Get out at once. But Baba remained standing there, calm and quiet and motionless. He either did not hear the warning or did not heed it. He didn't care. <coughs> Also, he was unmindful of the danger from the crocodiles. The watchman shouted repeatedly and said, If you do not come out, I shall go and report to the Raja, and you will be punished. Still, the Baba seemed to turn a deaf ear to him. The watchman went to the Raja and told him everything. The Raja came with some of his men and he asked the Baba to come out and threatened to punish him if he did not uh, if he did not, yeah. His threats also went unheeded. 
the Raja was surprised at his sorry, obduracy. Somebody knows this word? Audacity. Huh? Audacity. Audacity. Ah, okay. Huh? Obduracy, Audacity. it says in the book. Audacity, yeah, to have a nerve, not to listen or something. Yeah. And fearlessness. His curiosity was very much aroused to see that the Baba stood there unmoved and undisturbed like a like a man in samadhi and the crocodiles swarm around him swarm around him I swam around him sorry but did not even touch him he asked some of his men to remain there and bring him to his palace when he came out of the pond. The young Baba became a common subject of talk in the town. Some said that he was mad. Some said he had he had he had for some reason or other become desperate with his life and wanted to end it by throwing himself up to the crocodiles some however said that he was a mahapurusha as indicated by the luster he had on his face When Baba came out of the pond, he was taken to the Raja. The Raja did not take long to recognize that he was actually a Mahapurusha. He treated him well and insisted that he should remain in Dalia at least for some time to bless him and his people. Babaji stayed on. The young Babaji was born in 1843 in a Brahmin family of Bundei Khand. He had strong samskaras of bhakti. Samskaras are like previous, it's like a bank of bhakti from previous lives. So many who are practicing bhakti in previous lives, they collected samskaras and now when they are born again, yeah, these samskaras come out and they continue with their bhakti in this life. Impressions, yeah. Hmm? You want to share? Thank you. Uh -huh. Hi, so my question is uh, You answer. Mahabha. No, I have a question. No, he, my he question, has is, a question is Samskara he, always Mahabha, a answer. positive thing that you build up in past lives, or it also includes negative karma? No, uh, samskaras mean uh, impressions, yes, and they can be both uh, positive, they can be negative, they can be spiritual, they can be any kind. So uh, when we speak of some bhakti, samskaras for bhakti, that means that some person had previous, in previous lifetimes had <coughs> some uh, connection with bhakti. And those, uh, and those connections made impressions on him. So he could remember, maybe not remember, but when uh, in this life, the person comes in contact with bhakti and with some elements of bhakti, for instance, someone is singing kirtan and 
suddenly the person hears it and then uh, those samskaras are awakened, those impressions come back and that the person feels a strong attachment to that and attraction by just hearing it and he, dis he or she doesn't know where does it come from because suddenly they feel so much enlivened by this even though they know, don't know where, how did it come from or where did it come from but those are, those are usually these samskaras from uh, previous lives like these impressions just like <clears throat> when we come to Vrindavan we are making samskaras like uh, making impressions onto our heart of uh, experiencing Vrindavan. So when we go home or where we go, uh, we can uh, easily connect to Vrindavan we, because we were here. We felt we got the experience. So next time we go somewhere else and then we can eat more easily connect to Vrindavan because we have these impressions. That's basically some skaters. Yeah. <coughs> His parents apprehended that he might renounce the world. Therefore, they married him to a beautiful girl when he was only 16 years old. But marriage could not keep him tied to the world for long. This is interesting that in one of the previous stories, also parents were so much pushing that the person needs to marry, even if that person wanted to go to Vrindavan and renounce everything. Uh, so we can see here again this example. But this couldn't keep, keep him long. If he is already having some some scars, and he know he feels actually what he wants. So he renounced the world when he was still young, and began to roam about here and there in search of Krishna. He used to call him Yara which means a bosom friend. It is not known whether he had taken initiation from anyone or not, but he had known that Krishna loved to be the friend of a man who loved him and no one else uh, no, loved him and no one else, and desired his friendship and nothing else. So, like that one who is one pointed, who wants just Krishna and no one else. Since he had renounced everything with the sole desire of realizing, realizing him as his friend or Yara. He was, ah, since he had, since he had uh, yeah, yeah. Mm, he was confident that Krishna had already accepted him as his friend and must be as anxious to meet him as he was. Krishna had already entered his mind and sat there. He did not let him think of anything other than him and did not let him do anything except that which pleased him, meaning Krishna. Pleased Krishna. Huh? He knew that he was pleased by music. So he learned music and became a great singer. Though Krishna was always in his mind, he hoped that he would also someday see him face to face and enjoy his company. He went about from place to place 
always thinking of him and chanting his name. He was so much absorbed in his thought that sometimes he forgot all about himself and remained sitting or standing in the same posture for hours in the state of samadhi. So this is this is very interesting. Uh, we can see here an example of being into meditation about your Ishtadev, about your loving de deity, your Radha and Krishna, in, in this case, just Krishna. But we can see an example that how this person was 24 7 in, in the thoughts of Krishna. And because he was so much focused on Krishna, Krishna took seat in his mind. So he couldn't think nothing else. He was in his mind and everything was, he would always see him in his mind and think about him. Of course, he had one more desire. We already see that he was thinking so much about him, but his desire is to see him face to face. So we'll see how story goes and what will happen after in the story. So, in course of his ramblings, he reached Datia, <laughs> his, ah, okay. uh, his association brought about a complete, or, what? Uh, some grammatical errors, so I'm trying to uh, understand what they wanted to write. Yeah, 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 yeah. So next sentence is little grammatically. Yeah, and next one. Yeah. His association brought about a complete or ang ang a change. What? Yeah, yeah, complete change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's uh, missing letters. Uh, complete change in the mind of the Raja of Datya. He passed most of his time in Bhajana Kirtana and the company of Gwarya Baba. Datya, meaning the town itself, was charged with a current of bhakti it had never experienced before. Neither the Raja nor the people of Datya wanted that Gwarya Baba should ever leave Datya. But Baba must go to Vrindavana, where he thought his yar Yara or Yara, his Yara, friend, Yara. Yara. <laughs> his friend must be anxiously waiting for him. He quietly sneaked out of Datya on night, one night, and went to Vrindavana. In Vrindavana, he went from forest to forest and kunja to kunja in search of his yara, but could not find him. He rolled in the dust of Vrindavana and wept and cried. Oh Krishna, oh my friend, my heart, my soul, where are you? Sometimes in imagination, 
he had as vivid experience of him as in actual perceptions. Then he ran towards him, but he disappeared. And Baba fell senseless on the ground. He could no more bear his separation. In utter desperation and resentment, he gave up the search. He said to himself, I have done my best to find him. He seems to elude, he seems to eluding me. I will no more bother about him. Let him find me. If he cares for my friendship, yeah? So let him find me. <laughs> friendship is a two-way traffic, not one. <laughs> oh, funny this. Yeah, this is <laughs> nice. Yeah, he did his best. So let the God do rest, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is nice. Yeah, but we can see how much he was totally absorbed in thinking about Krishna. And he could in, see him clearly in his visions. But Krishna likes to joke. You know, so he sees Krishna, starts running to him, and Krishna poof, disappears. Yeah. And so, Baba so, wanted, so much wanted to hug him, but couldn't, and was searching him throughout whole Vrindavana. And in the end said, okay, enough, come on, you know, I'm running after you everywhere, I can't anymore, I searched everywhere, I did my best. And now it's your turn. Yeah. Why not? Love and relationship go two ways. Always. You know, we are in our process of connecting with our Ishtadev and relating with our Ishtadev, our beloved deity. But we wouldn't stay here if it is not two-way relationship. Because everybody who is doing this, he gets love back. In some way, everybody have different relationship with their, with their Ishtadev. But if we wouldn't get anything back, it couldn't last too long. It would be very difficult. Of course, we can see examples where sometimes, for some, this longing and separation lasts very long. But Radha and Krishna never forget us. So, we are... You wanted to say something? Yes. Yeah, please take the microphone. Thank you very much that you emphasize this, this aspect, that uh, Radha Krishna, they are also see us, and they respond. And it is up to me to, to sensibilize my tuning, to, to recognize the answers. And there are answers and responding. So if, if my tuning is <clears throat> to, if, if I don't, if I'm not making myself sensible for receiving the responses, so it's up to me. There are always responding. Thank <laughs> you.
please. Thank you. Once Shil Shidar, Bhakti Rakshak Shidar Goswami Maharaj told, the greatest is a great, why? Because he could, he could give himself to the smallest. It's not, uh, it's my feelings. Uh, I can try to tune myself, but I think it's by mercy. Uh, I can be easily tuned by them, easily, in one moment. If they want me to hear, I couldn't avoid it. I will hear. Out there. Yeah, uh, I, I agree totally that uh, they can do that, of course. They can force us to hear them. But uh, my experience and how much I listened, uh, I learned that the most important thing is our focus. Because like a radio station, yes. you need to find the frequency, focus on the frequency to hear that station. Of course, somebody can put on loudspeaker and you can hear it. Yeah. But, but the point is that they want, that we also want to hear, because we know that only our only qualification is our desire. That's the only qualification. And by the desire, which we are showing, not just, okay, I want, but we are showing through our actions and thoughts, by which we are focusing on them and our Ishtadev, then it's much more easier to hear, to feel. Also their love. And that love from them, we can see it through many ways, through many situations, through feelings, you know, and that we are even here and that we are receiving so much love from everyone is also one way of getting their love. Nobody is here by, by accident. Nobody. There are no accidents. All is guided by them. So, you know, I always remember from Tony Robbins, how he says, where the focus goes, energy flows. And this is really nice. You know, we want to choose where our energy flows and from where we are getting energy. So where our focus goes, energy flows. And this is, this, when I heard this, this was for me, wow. So nice quote, you know, so yeah. Uh, somebody else, maybe, would like to share something? Oh, please, you need to take microphone. So you, you mentioned the word like an antenna, and, and what you just described now, the Tony Robbins energy flow. In my experience, I think like gratitude is one of the highest uh, manifesting vibrations. So if you ever experience... Uh, your Ishta or God blessing you with mercy or grace in any way, all you can do is just bring gratitude at that time and I believe that will make it manifest more. So I think uh, if you're in constant gratitude, you'll attract more and more of that. That's what I wanted to share. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, gratitude is very important because this comes naturally. You know, uh, I believe everybody here felt gratitude, especially when you are being loved and cared by others and by your Ishtade. When you get from them love, when you feel their love, this naturally, this gratitude, gratefulness, this comes naturally. And 
if we are aware of it and really become on this grateful from our hearts, this helps us uh, in growing our love towards our Ishtadev. That's why this is two-way street, you know? I mean, relationship, two-way relationship. And that's important because if it's just one way, then it's very difficult. It can't last. We know in this world, relationships that are one way, that is very difficult. You know? I mean, we, are, we, have, uh, we want to have unconditional love. And unconditional love means we, are, we love you, we, we don't want nothing back for that love. But in nature of things, I will say, it is always two-way. Reciprocation. So our Ishtadev always reciprocates. We, we, those who listened last week, the story that uh, there was that Gulab Baba who was serving Vaishnavas and he didn't want to be served, never. But I will not now read the whole story, but just the point that then Govindaji or Krishna himself was coming and serving him. Hidely. Hidingly, yeah? He was acting as a person who brought money like from someone else. And then after he disappeared, uh, he couldn't find him anymore. And second time he needed some wood. And policeman brings a thief who said wood is for him, like he ordered wood. Yeah. But uh, it was all the time Govindaji or Krishna. Serving him. Yeah, this was last week's story, but it's showing this, that relationship goes two ways. You know, even if we maybe don't want that our Ishtadev serves us, they said there in that story, he couldn't help it. <laughs> you know? Hmm? Yeah, yeah, please, please, please share. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe, I like to share a little experience from this day. I have the opportunity to go to Radakun tomorrow. Uh, my friends ask me to come with them. But I have Zoom Siva tomorrow. So I'm not sure if I can find someone who can do the Zoom Siva. And this is important, also important. So I ask Swamini Radharani, Please give me a sign what, do, what you really want. Do you want me to go to Radakund or do you want me to stay in Munga Mandir and how to do this? And I go to bed with this question. And in the morning, I entered basement for the morning class and one Japanese devotee who does normally this Zoom today, she came to me and asked me, oh, can you please help me? Can, can you do my Zoom this evening, this Zoom now? <laughs> and I said, yes, <laughs> I can. Can you do the Zoom for me tomorrow? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so beautiful to imagine that Radharani arranged this. And on this way, she gave me the answer very quickly. I didn't thought about the answer, but when I entered and I, she asked me, I was sure this is the answer. So I can go to Radakund and this is Radharani's wish to go to Radakund tomorrow with my friends. Radhe, Jai Radhe. So beautiful, so beautiful. And you all know this, be careful what you desire in Vrindavan, you know? So... What you desire, it can come true. <laughs> Guys, Vrindavan is like Kalpa Vriksha tree or wish fulfilling tree. So, many stories like this. Devotees 
needing something and suddenly appears. So this is one beautiful example. I mean, no. my, wish, my wish was that she decides what yeah, I Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Because yeah. yeah, her wish was that Radhika desires, yeah, yeah so, uh, the decides, decides, yeah, Radhika decides that she will go to Radha Kund or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so nice. So, friendship is a two-way traffic, not one. He gave up the search and began to pass his time in witnessing Ras Lila and training the actors of Ras Lila in musical performances, which are an essential part of Ras Lila. Read this note, what is Ras Lila? Ah, what is Ras Lila? Yeah. Ras Lila, in this case, is theatrical representation of Krishna Lila, uh, prevalent in Vrindavana. So this was a note for Ras Lila in this uh, context, yeah. He hoped that his resentment and show of indifference towards hi him or Krishna would have, have the desired effect and he would come. Mm -hmm. No, he was clever. He was thinking, ah, now if I will like ignore. ignore and not search for him anymore, now he will maybe change his way and come to me. <laughs> this is like uh, playing with children. And for example, they are hiding, you are searching for them, but then you hide. And the child, oh, watching, where is he? Where is he? Yeah, and child starts to search for you. <laughs> so in that way, he wanted, now Krishna, you find me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I was searching long enough. Okay. But this hope was also belied. B E L I E apostrophe D. Belied. Belied. Meaning? In English. Yeah. Some uh, archaic words are used in this book, so yeah. the translation for some words, because they're really unusual words. Oh. Okay, let's continue. We will make it will make sense. <laughs> there was then no end to his anger. He said to him, or Krishna, in his mind, I had heard you, you were kind-hearted and loving. If one advanced even a single step towards you, you readily moved ten steps forward to meet and embrace him. But this was a lie. I have now discovered that you are most unkind and cruel. Friendship with you means only frustration and suffering. Oh, oh he was angry on Krishna. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so no more friendship with you. If you are proud of being the prince of Nandagram, I am also proud of being a master of my own self. I vow that if I ever come across you, I shall not even look at you. Oh. Wow. wow. And yeah, this is, this is really wow. I mean, and usually, when they give vows, they mean it. <laughs> he was so much angry on Krishna because he didn't show himself directly to him that he vowed that if he sh comes in front of him, 
he will not look at him. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this Mahabhava says this is also with love. Oh, can you explain what it means? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Please take. Then somebody sit here. You know, I'm sitting here alone. Please fill up spaces around me. <laughs> because this war, this man, okay. this Baba is not a general person. Mm -hmm. He has love. And then he is speaking like this is man. Mm -hmm. And yes, man is a symptom of love. It's very nice. it, explain and man. Ah, man and means love, though, yeah. anger, mm -hmm. anger in love. Mm -hmm. Like Srimati Radhika, if Krishna is not coming in proper time for meeting, she can become in man, come in this mood of man. Thank you. This is exactly what I wanted to say. That how, when you ask what, how does it, how, how do I mean that his anger was loving? Actually, out of love, you get angry. Like, oh, you're so bad, but you know, I don't want to have anything with you anymore. But I still love you. But it's like, mm, like a child, you know, that when they, yeah. But they still love. Like, oh, I don't want to have anything with you. And five minutes later, and like, oh, here's my love. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th this happened to me a few times, like in a, not in the same context, but different context. It was like when, you know, probably all of you have this experience when you feel empty and in, have some periods where you feel disconnected from Radha and Krishna, and you feel so dry and empty inside. And uh, I had this feeling, oh, Radhika has abandoned me. And then I was even angry, like, okay, if you want to abandon me, okay, I don't care. And you know, the same day, I get some proofs that she does care, and then different things, different coincidences happening to prove me the opposite. And I was like, ah, now I'm relieved. <laughs> you know, she still does care. So this is always, they always prove you the opposite, mm, okay. yeah. that they do care. Yeah, there is one example I remember when Mahabhava was feeling like that, <coughs> and similarly was a similar situation, and she just got from one friend totally out of context because they were not talking, not, nothing about it. That friend didn't know what's going on. She got the message, Radhika loves you. Yeah. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, I, I will, okay, now it's time for sharing one story. <laughs> it's uh, interesting because we touched this and it's connected. You know, uh, one hour friend from Hungary, uh, Paramakaruna is his name, and um, we had arrangement with him. I will not go in two stories, just one. So arrangement was that our Giriraj can come to the rest Govinda's restaurant in Budapest. He was running the restaurant. He was running a restaurant there, yeah. And that our Giriraj can come every time when we are there to get whole offering, whatever they cooked in the restaurant. So uh, first time when we were there, he was actually thinking, oh, is Krishna happy with me by service in this restaurant? But what happened? We came with Giriraj and Giriraj was eating on the table in the restaurant and he was sitting on a napkin because we didn't have anything else. And when he saw him, he got his answer that Krishna came to him in his restaurant to eat. And he got his confirmation immediately. That shows us also that Radha and Krishna know in advance how we will feel and they make 
arrangement in time for everything. But the next time when we arrived there, one year, one year later, so we knew that we need to call him, tell him that we came and that next day we will come for the offering in the restaurant. But somehow I got the feeling that she needs to send him a message that says, your friend has come and he is very hungry. Like that to write. Totally feeling, my feeling was, you need to write like this. And amazingly, next day, when we met him, he said, at that moment, he was feeling, I have no friends. I am all alone. He was feeling depressed and sad so much. And then he received the message, your friend has come and he is very hungry. Wow. Yeah? That's that. Yeah, he was feeling that even Krishna, everybody abandoned him. He had no friend. But then he got the message. So, Radhika and Krishna, they're both acting through other people. Like, I got the inspiration that this message should be written like this. I have no idea why. I felt it needs to say, your friend has come and he's very hungry. Just that. I have no idea the behind context, what was happening on his side. So it's interesting. We will see how this story goes. I haven't read it before. So it's also a surprise for me. So we will see what's, how it will go. But this story, what I said, this situation also shows this, that they will somehow show you we are here, you know, we care in some way. So the story continues. In resentment, resent, resentment, Gwariya Baba stopped chanting his name, Krishna's name. He also stopped doing, uh, going to Rasa Lila and the temples. Not only this, he sometimes stood, <clears throat> he sometimes stood at the gate of a temple and tried to <coughs> dissuade people from going in for darshana. <laughs> he was so much angry. <laughs> he said to them, brethren, listen, if you do not want to lose your happiness, do not have anything to do with Krishna. He is most untrustworthy and unkind. He revels only with the gopis of Raja and cares little for anyone else. <laughs> Shri Krishna was thus deprived of the darshana of his dear friend, who had become unfriendly and stopped going to the temples. He feared that he might also be deprived of the darshana of his other devotees if they came under his influence. <laughs> this was too much for him to bear. He felt that he must do something about it. Oh, so it works. <laughs> something happening. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> One day at dusk, when Gwariya Baba was roaming about in Ramanreti, this is one place in Vrindavana, he saw a group of cows coming out of the forest. Shortly after, he saw the environment becoming aglow with the blue luster of the body 
of a handsome cowherd, handsome cowherd, and heard the sweet notes of his flute. He wore a peacock feather on his crown. His curly hair were back, uh, bedecked, bedecked uh, with flowers, decorated with flowers, and he had a be bewitching smile on his lips. Oh, this is Yara, shouted Baba, and a shiver went through his spine. He forgot his vow not to look at him <laughs> <coughs> with eyes wide open and swimming in tears of love. He kept gazing at him for some time, like one in the state of drunken stupor. stupor. Krishna also continues, continued to look at him with eyes full of deep affection. Then both locked each other in long, deep and loving embrace. After some time, Krishna said, Gwarya, why have you come so late? I have all along been restlessly waiting for you. <laughs> now he's saying he was waiting for you. <laughs> this is funny. Yeah. He's joking like, oh, I was waiting already five hours, you know. <laughs> but actually, he just came. <laughs> This aroused the injured self-conceit of Baba. Stop it, Baba said. At, one, at once. He said, he, he, he said at once, yeah. <laughs> if you were really anxious to meet me, could you not come? <laughs> you, could not, you could not, because you are the Prince of Raj. I'm... I'm... Who? Oh? I am poor cowherd. What have you do to what have you to do with me? He has oh sorry. He said this and walked away. Krishna said, Gwarya, when shall we meet again? Oh, you can come and meet whenever you want. I do not go anywhere out of Raja. This marked the beginning of a new chapter in the friendship between the two cowherds. This is interesting. I read uh, one other story from this book a few days ago, where similarly, uh, the person like that, if Krishna didn't want to do something, okay, then I will leave. <coughs> you know? He wanted that Krishna comes to, to see his Gurudev also, you know? And uh, Krishna said, oh no, I don't want to have anything with him. Oh, if you don't want to have anything with him, then I don't want to have anything with you. And he left Krishna and went. And then Krishna said, hey, wait, 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 I didn't mean like that. <laughs> so, and in the end, Krishna met his Gurudev also. <laughs> but, but a similar thing here. Oh, okay, I'm going. If you want, you will come. <laughs> so, so this marked the beginning of a new chapter in the friendship between the two cowherds. They met often and reveled in humorous talks, often full of sarcasm and satire, 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 and plays of different kinds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> interesting. Sarcastically, they were joking. I think maybe lots of uh, dead jokes. Yes, <laughs> Saint <Saint> Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they lovingly served each other. Sometimes they quarreled. Can I just share something? Yeah, please take microphone. <laughs> 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 
I, I would like to uh, comment on this, how uh, they would talk and, and, and humorously, uh, how say, they would often full of sarcasm and satire and uh, plays of different kinds. I was thinking, you know, if we would still worship God in this awe and reverence, we would never have this such so much fun. Because only in, in Vrindavan, in Vraj, Krishna is taking up the role of an ordinary human friend. How how does they say Alokika Ban? Lokika Sambanduvat. <laughs> Lokika Sambandu. What? what? <laughs> like a, he's playing a role of an ordinary friend, which means he's relaxed to be uh, just ordinary, quote unquote, <clears throat> just normal, like a friend, because then he's relaxed to joke, to have fun, to experience this normal, loving relationship, a human relationship. Because if he were to stay in Vaikuntha as a supreme lord, you know, everybody's buying down to them, to him. <clears throat> and uh, that sweetness is missing. Just like today we were singing Maduram, Adaram, Maduram. He's so sweet. Everything about is sweet. But why is it sweet? Because he's natural, he's normal, he's joking, he's playing. And, and he can even have this kind of relationship where his friend gets angry, so-called angry at him, just to increase this natural feeling of love and re uh, natural um, friendship and relationship. And this is so amazing, sarcastic jokes. Would you, would you imagine? Can you imagine that God is talk, uh, joking you with you in a sarcastic way? <laughs> amazing. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we where does sarcasm come from? Yeah, that I wanted to say. Uh, Hanumanji is saying from where sarcasm is coming from, you know, <laughs> from him. Yeah, of course. So, and, yeah, he's an expert in sarcasm, definitely. So, yeah, so this is wow. So let's let's continue because we have we have lots of pages. Yeah, this story is little longer. Yeah, please take microphone if you want to share. Yes, he he's learned this uh, sarcasm from Shimati Radhika. Ah. So many times he was under her sarcasm. Oh, you're so best lover. Yeah. Something like this. Uh -huh. mm. <laughs> Actually, I'm so happy that you say this. This is the source of, of opposition, actually, our Radhika. And she is Adi Guru, and she is giving through the heart this information to that devotee that actually you have to opposite. You have to actually just turn the back to him. Then he will come. Because Krishna loves that. When Radharani is against him and she swears that she will not look at him, she will not talk with him, and she will not touch him. We can see that actually there is a connection to that story. It's a wonderful connection. Because when Radhika wowed that, then Krishna is inspired to break these vows. This is his big inspiration. He wants to play that game. So this information is coming from her. She is the source of that sarcastic or opposition position. And she is actually also given the friends the intelligence how to play with Krishna in the right way that he will be interested. <coughs> so I'm very happy that Radha Charan was mentioning this point actually. I'm sorry that 
You have to read a lot, but <laughs> no <had> problem. <laughs> Especially this book is so inspiring. You know, we can see this live relationship with Ishtadev. In his case, with Krishna, you know? and and what you mentioned that Krishna actually likes good challenge. And this challenge to break the vows <laughs> of others. <laughs> this is a big challenge for him. And especially, I mean, he promised he will not look at him. And as soon as he saw him, he forgot <laughs> everything. <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> frolicsome Krishna sometimes met him in disguise. Once Gwariya Baba had gone to Vairata in Jaipur state with Sen, ah, Sen Raghunath Das and Sri Chantamal, Chantamal, his friends. Chantamai, his friends. Ah, Chantamal, his friends. They returned to Nandagram at about 10 p.m. They were tired, so they lay down to sleep without eating anything. At the same time came a boy with a pot full of milk and said, Baba, Ramakal, Ramakali has sent this milk. Baba was surprised. How could Ramakali get the information about his arrival so soon? He took the milk and he and his two friends drank the milk. The milk had a supernatural taste. Though small in quantity, it made them feel full to, to sati satiety. Such, huh? Satiety? Yeah? Satiety. Satiety, yeah. yeah. Satisfied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To satisfaction. Okay. Yeah, to full satisfaction. Yeah. The next day, Baba went to the house of Ramakali to return the milk pot. He said, Ramakali, here is your milk pot. The milk you sent was very tasty. Yeah. Everyone, please mute themselves, please. Yeah. Ah, it's good the place. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, in, in Gurudev's uh, place, it's unmuted now. So uh, maybe somebody wants to share or? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So gross. Yeah. And you have not taken it. I don't know if you have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. They got it. No, oh, please, uh, if somebody is unmuted, there, please mute. No, yeah. okay. it's okay. No, it's okay. Okay. So they brought the pot back. The milk you sent was very tasteful. Rama Kelly was stupefied. He said, Baba, when did I send the milk? This pot is not mine. It is perhaps the one I often see in the temple of Nandalal. Baba then went to Nandalal's temple. <coughs> As soon as Kishari Lal, the Pujari of the temple, 
saw the pot in Baba's hand, he said, Baba, why did you take away this pot? I have been searching it, searching it since, ye since morning. Yesterday night, I forgot to take it home and left it after, after offering milk to Nandalal. Gwaria Baba understood that it was Nandalal himself who had gone to him with the milk. He kept looking at the Sri Vigraha, the deity of Nandalal in the temple for some time, while tears of love trickled down his eyes. Just want to see what's our time. Mm. Yeah, Nandalal is the Krishna. Yeah. So we can see beautifully here that when he understood, oh, it was my friend, Krishna, Nandalal, who brought us the milk. He felt, <laughs> wow, he loves me so much. And us, all us, you know, he loves us so much. And naturally, tears are going from his eyes, coming from his eyes. Yeah. Once on the occasion of the Holy Festival, Baba was staying at the house of Goswami Kishanlal in Nandagram. He purchased four kilogram gula, gulab jamun. At the same time, came two Brajavasi boys. Brajavasi are those who live in Vrindavan, in Raja area, who are born here. And Gulab Jamun is a sweet who. Don't know, yeah. uh, Rajabasi boys uh, who came, uh, who used to play the part of Krishna and Balaram in Rasa Lila. They said, Baba, we are hungry. Give us something to eat. Baba made them both sit in his lap and fed them the Gulab Jamuns with his own hand. After the boys had eaten to their fill, then said, Baba, no more, we have had our fill, no more, don't give us more. The next day, Baba invited all the actors of the Rasa Lila group to which the boys belonged. Those boys also came. Baba fed everyone with gulab jamans. But he said to these boys, I will not feed you today, because you were fed yesterday. The, bo the boys retorted. Oh, yeah, they said it's the word retorted. Responded. Responded, yeah. <coughs> Baba, when did we come to you yesterday? We were not even aware of your arrival. If you do not want to feed us, don't. But why tell a lie? Kishan Lal and others who had seen Baba feeding the boys that they said, Boys, it is not Baba, but you who are speaking a lie. We saw Baba feeding you yesterday with our own eyes. Upon this, the Swami the leader of this Rasa Lila party and the other boys of the group exclaimed, these boys were all along with us yesterday. How could they have come here? Baba understood that not those boys, but Krishna Balaram had, had on their guise, disguise and come and sat in his lap and eaten the gulab jamans from his own hand. As Baba realized this, he was overwhelmed with bhava. Tears streamed out of his eyes. His body shivered and he became unconscious. Unconscious, yeah, he became unconscious. 
on regaining outward consciousness, he made those boys sit in his lap and fed them as he had fed Krishna Balaram. So they got Golab Jamans. A second. Let's see, just want to see how much we have. Because I'm thinking yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, we learned that Krishna was always playing with him and sometimes came in disguise. And we still didn't learn why he was standing in the pool of crocodiles. And this we will learn in the next episode. <laughs> rade, rade. If somebody, <laughs> if somebody wants to share something, connection with this, what is your experience? <coughs> yeah, please do. Yeah, Saint Mark will share with us. <laughs> so this uh, practice of sarcasm. <laughs> I had a real good rapport with one of the ladies that was here, Carrie, and we'd go back and forth, back and forth. Well, when we got our yapas and we were doing the outdoor, <laughs> outdoor meditation, and for some reason I was just going real slow and I kind of fell into a kind of just state of despair for some reason. I just, almost a mild depression. I don't know what it was about or why it was happening, but for maybe 10 laps around there, I was just by myself and sinking into this. When I met with the group and they'd all stopped right out here, and uh, we were kind of in a, in a, at a lull there because I think we were waiting for one more person or something. And a worker walked by. What? A worker, a worker. And uh, I walked over to Carrie, she was across from me, and I whispered into her, I says, this fella stole your car. She, she looks at me, what? I says, he stole your car. No, she has no car here. I says, didn't you see him walk by with that big broom? She paused and then she started laughing, so you know, like a witch, and that's her car, right? So she started laughing so hard, she about fell to her knees, and that pulled me right out of it. I, I just grabbed that energy and, and no longer did I feel this despair. <laughs> and, but using that sarcasm in a friend, if I would have said, you old witch, there goes your car, you know, that would have been hurtful. But this was in a, in a, a joyful, kidding, playful way, you know. But it, <laughs> it, it got her laughing, but it pulled me out of what I was at. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Radha and Krishna are not boring. Mm -hmm. They love to joke so much. And sometimes they are joking with us that we are not aware until we become aware. <laughs> and we are laughing, oh, that was a good one. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Bhagavad Gita, for example, is full of love, I will say. Uh, Shla Prabhupada wrote Bhagavad Gita and Gurudev will always quote parts of Bhagavad Gita and says that so much, uh, this, uh, it's so, that this Bhagavad Gita is so much important and uh, if we first read, for example, Vilapa Kusumanjali and similar books which are full of love and this Manjari Bhava, uh, then we can really understand Bhagavad Gita. But for me, before, when I read Bhagavad Gita, for me, in one way, it was funny. I was thinking, what is this big joke on Arjuna? You know, first Krishna made him scared, gave him from the heaviest process, then two little easiest processes. And 
in the end, Arjuna was just saying, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. This is too heavy for me, or I can't concentrate <laughs> so much, <laughs> do meditation, some, or like that. But in the end, Krishna said, like, okay. After he scared him through all the processes, Krishna said, Form. Yeah, because it's Krishna, scary. yeah, Krishna showed his universal form. You know, it was totally scared. Uh, when Arjuna was totally scared of this, totally confused. That in the end, Krishna says, "Okay, now forget all this and just surrender to me, and all will be okay." Yeah, Sarva Dharma Paritya Jam Sharanam Yeah, he said, "Leave every type of religion, oh Dharma." Every type of dharma, yeah, sarva dharma, all the dharma, live. Huh? And just surrender to me. Actually, Gurdjie would say, meaning, ma me kam, meaning my own, like, surrender to my own. Who is Krishna's own? Radhe, Radhika, yes. So, surrender to Radhika, and all will be okay. We give ourselves to Radhika. Hmm? You could have said it in the beginning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Krishna could say it in the beginning. But, uh -huh. ah, you know, we know this that uh, sometime we need to see the contrast. Yeah, all those ways are valid ways to come to Krishna. But they are difficult ways and maybe some impossible in some ages. But the point is that Sometime in life we need to see, we need to feel the winter to appreciate the spring. S somebody, yeah, somebody can immediately appreciate, but somebody needs to feel the winter, and then when the spring comes, you say, wow, this is amazing. No? But we can appreciate it. So also this uh, showed us the contrast of all the ways to approach God or in Krishna, you know, to come to Krishna. So, in the end Krishna said, okay, now you saw all this and now forget all this, you know, leave all this and just surrender unto me or unto my one, Radhika. Okay, thank you Radhe. Radhe. Maybe somebody there is to share. I'm still here. A few minutes if you want to share or, or not. Then we can continue soon. Arti here starting. So I say something short. Oh? Yes, sir. Jai Shri Ram.